Hey guys, I'm glad you could tune in today because today we are going to go back to basics here on the channel. We're going to hack a machine called Ice that's available on TryHackMe. It is a free room on TryHackMe, so you don't even need a subscription if you want to jump on there and follow along. With that being said, let's go ahead and jump on over to our Kali here and get started. We will start out with an Nmap scan, running all tests at a rate of T4 on all ports. We'll make it verbose, and we will put the output into nmap.txt and then plug in the IP address of the machine. Now, while that's running, you may notice that I'm not connected to the TryHackMe VPN, and that is because this machine is also available for an offline download that you can run as a virtual machine. I would recommend that you stick to the TryHackMe room, though, because there are a few differences to the download that I've modified the downloadable machine to match the behavior of the TryHackMe hosted machine. But if you don't do that, then just know that what you encounter with that will not exactly match up what you see here on the video. But if you stick to the Try Hack Me room and the hosted machine, then you'll be just fine. And I also want to mention real quick that a link to this Try Hack Me room will be available in the description below. And while you're down there checking that out, go ahead and leave me a comment. Let me know if you like this video, if you have any questions, or if there's anything else that you'd like to see in the future. All right, and our scan just finished up here. So let's scroll on back up to the top here. And we can see that there's not too many ports open, so that's nice. Not too much to have to worry about. There's SMB. There's the standard Windows RPC stuff. So it is a Windows machine, and it's telling us right here that it's Windows 7 Pro Service Pack 1. So that's quite old, so that's interesting. It's also got RDP running, so that could be useful later. That's not too useful for us right now because we already know what Windows version it's running, so there's not much point in banner grabbing it and we also don't have any credentials to log in with. We get down here and this is pretty interesting. On port 8000 there's an HTTP service but it doesn't look to be a web server. It looks like it is an IceCast streaming media server. So since the name of the machine is Ice, I think we can make a pretty good guess that this is probably has something to do with our point of entry. So we don't know exactly what version this IceCast server is running but Let's go ahead and go out to the internet and just see if we can find anything interesting right offhand. So we'll search for IceCast exploit GitHub. And what do you know? First result here we have is an IceCast header overwrite buffer overflow. It looks like it will provide us with RCE if the IceCast server is version 2.0.1 or less, or less than 2.0.1. So let's go ahead and go on in here and check this thing out. All right, it says that it's running with Python 3. That's nice. So it's relatively modern. And then let's see, how do we use it here? It looks like it's super simple. We just have to launch it against the address and the port that the IceCast is running on. So if we come over here now I've already downloaded this and it should be in CVE 2004 1561 so let's go right in here and if you're downloading this yourself you can just grab it using git but I've already done so so we've got the icecast.py right here to use and let's see what we can do it said to open a listener on port 443 and then to lob that bad boy over at the address and the port was 8000 it says it's done let's check our listener all right we're in awesome and who am i i am dark okay so the next thing that we're probably going to want to do right off the bat we can always well we are eventually going to want to escalate our privileges you can always look around manually a bit first and sometimes that can give you a quick win if for instance you see that you have se impersonate privilege then that can be a, a really quick way to use a potato attack to elevate privileges but we don't see that here so let's not spend too much time worrying about looking at things one by one manually let's just go ahead and grab winpeas and run that our windows privilege escalation awesome script so let's make sure that we know where it is hosted or what file name it's under and then let's run a Python web server 
to host it. Let's come back over here. Let's actually make sure that we're in a directory that we should be able to write to. So that should be users dark. All right, this looks good. Let's go ahead and go right to his desktop. And then we will say cert util. That's, there's a few ways that you can do this, but I like using cert util. It's always there. It's usually pretty reliable. And we'll split the file and tell it to cache it. And then the file is located at HTTP and then the address of the Kali machine that we're on. And then come over here. That was winpsini.exe. Hopefully that'll work. Should just take a few seconds. Let's come back over here and check. Yep, there it goes. There is cert util grabbing it. And here it is. Should be there. All right, we're in business. And then we can just paste the name of the executable again and get it running. All right, and Peas is finished running. I've already scrolled us all the way back up to the top here so we can go through it. And if you're not familiar with Peas, it color coats everything. The legend is right here. What we are primarily gonna be looking for is something colored red. What color? Red. Because that's usually a higher probability of something that will allow us to escalate privileges. So I kind of already know what we're looking for. So I'm gonna skip through a lot of this because it just would take too long to go through all of it and explain it all. I could always do maybe a little bit more in-depth video about peas in the future. If you want to see that, just let me know in the comments. But for now, I will try to scroll down real quick and get to the thing that I think we're going to use. And I'll also tell you while I'm scrolling, the reason why I think this is going to be available is because there's RDP available on the host. And so a good chance that this dark user has already logged in and they have, because here we can see we have their NTLM v2 credentials cached. Now with NTLM v2, we cannot pass the hash with this to log in as them, but we can grab the hash and we can come back over here and we can echo the hash out into hashes.txt. And then we can use our friend John with word list rock you on hashes.txt. And it very quickly comes back and tells us that it cracked it for us. And now we know the plain text password is password 01 bang. And if you remember from earlier, RDP is running on the machine. So now that we have a set of credentials, we can go ahead and just log in through that way. And to do that, we'll use our friend xfree RDP. And I'm just going to go ahead and complete the command line there. So I don't have to type all that out, but we're feeding it the IP address, the username and password, and then telling it that we want clipboard access. And then this work area argument is going to set it so that it is just full screen basically. And then we're also configuring a windows share drive feeding back to our Kali system, which is just gonna make it really easy in case we need to transfer any more files. And we'll get that going and it'll get us logged in here. And then we can see the IceCast server running here. Now it looks completely fine at first glance, but internally it's a little bit garbled because we did launch that buffer overflow attack against it, but that's okay. We don't need it anymore, so we'll just go ahead and minimize it. And then to start out with on here, let's go ahead and fire up a command prompt. Now now, so far, this is just going to be the same command prompt that we had access to over the network shell, but I personally like to get onto a graphical interface on Windows, especially on Windows clients, if I can, just because I feel like that's how Windows was designed to work. And so it's a little bit more stable and user friendly. And then one thing that we can do for potentially a quick win here is we can check this dark user and just see what groups he might be part of. We do see here that he is in the local group membership of administrators. So that's super great because we could have potentially taken advantage of this over the network, but we probably would have had to have bypassed UAC. But since we now have a fully graphical interface, we can actually just right click 
run this as administrator and it helpfully just pops up right here and asks us, do you want to do that? And since we have full graphical control, we can just click yes. And there we have it. We have an administrator command prompt. Now, if we check who am I now, we will see that we are still just the dark user. So there is one more level we could take this to, which is to gain full system access. Since we are running in an administrator context, that shouldn't be too hard. But the way we're going to do it is we're going to bring in one more tool. We'll go to our Kali share and our tools, and we are going to want something called Juicy Potato. We will copy that onto the desktop, minimize that, and then come in here and we need to go to CD to Users Dark Desktop. Check it out, it's right there. Now, Juicy Potato is going to help us abuse the SE impersonate privilege that this user has in the administrator context and elevate us all the way up to system context. And I'm just gonna come and copy and paste the command line because it's a little bit long, but basically it's selecting a COM port and then a CLS ID to use. The type should usually be star and then the switch P is the command that you want to run as system. There's also a newer tool called God Potato that's a little easier to use but God Potato is actually too new and it won't work on Windows 7 very well. So we're gonna fall back to Juicy Potato, but if you're working on a Windows 10 machine, for instance, God Potato is even easier to use than this. But this will work for right now, so we'll run it and it will pop us open another command prompt. And now when we check who am I, we can see that we've got it. We are NT Authority System. All right, and that ought to wrap us up for today. Make sure you're subscribed on the way out, and I'll see you next time. Until then, happy hacking.